Hey everyone, it's Matt from Akuma Mods. Today we have another uh, resin printer to uh, unbox, set up, and give some initial impressions. Uh, this one is called the Spark Maker. Now, uh, Spark Maker did reach out to me and ask me if I can do uh, a little review on it, and uh, that's what we're going to kind of do a little bit. Uh, but more or less, it's just going to be unboxing, setting up, doing our first print. And then we're going to come back around uh, on another video and just kind of show off some of the prints that came off the printer. So, um, I don't know if you guys can see this, but I do have a Anycubic Photon. Um, that is the size comparison between them. So, there's probably a good two to three inch difference height-wise uh, compared to the Spark Maker. Uh, and it's probably even going to be smaller than that because there's usually packing supplies in here. But uh, anyway, uh, let's get down to the nitty gritty. There's not really much on the box except for, you know, WoW Innovations Shenzhen Technology, which uh, if you guys are into 3D printing, you know that's where pretty much everything uh, comes out of China for 3D printers. Um, this is just the Spark Maker. This isn't the FHD, which, uh, as it states here. So there is a different version of this. Uh, I believe it's a little bit bigger. Uh, I haven't really checked too much into it, but uh, here's some QR codes for their website, email address, Facebook group, and uh, QQ group. I'm not really sure what that is, but I, I've seen a lot of that lately. Um, on the top here it says, uh, Spark Maker, please read the operation guide carefully before using for the first time. So, uh, first off I just want to say this is one of the nicer packaged printers so far. Just initial impression. Uh, all the other ones come in like a very generic, um, cardboard box that, you know, you would ship anything in. Uh, this one actually comes in a nice looking box that you might find at a store. So I did open this up a little bit and uh, I did take off some of the plastic wrapping because I wanted to see if it came with anything else beforehand, but obviously it did not. So we put it all back together. Um, so when you open it, it says we're here to help uh, questions, basically their Facebook group and everything. And then uh, you could also get a free bottle of resin as well. So it's just you got to contact their customer support and uh, they'll get you all set up there. So let's see if we can take this out. All right, so there's the top half. Um, we'll get to that in a second. Looks like, uh, looks like a mask, a strainer. And I'm not really sure what that is. We'll, we'll have to take a look at it. Um, we do have a nice beefy operating guide. Jeez. It's definitely one of the nicer guides that I've seen so far, uh, for sure. Like I said, I already opened this up, so here's the hood. We're going to take out the entire unit. And, uh, let's just make sure that everything is out of here. Yep. Everything's good. Okay, so we have our Spark Maker right here. Uh, like I said, it is a very, very small printer. Uh, and as you can see, it did lose some height. Um, I'm going to say it's about as high as my Hiya SQ1, um, which is about uh, 10 millimeters less than my Elegoo Mars or my Anycubic. So let's go ahead and cut this tape off. Okay. So on here, on the packaging, you have your typical um, foam, and then on each side there's these little boxes. Um, so let's see here, we'll toss that in the box, let's see what we got here. So box number one, we have a power cord. Uh, looks like we have an SD card, full-size SD card, actually. Uh, two Allen keys, and uh, even though this technically is a scraper, this is actually used more for, like, pry tool. I have this exact same one uh, that I use to pry open stuff with. 
that somewhere. We'll look for it later. Uh, but yeah, I use that exact same tool, uh, same color and everything. So, all right. Other box contains the actual power brick to power it. Uh, and it looks like this is a 24 volt, uh, just your generic one. Um, this does have a power on and off switch, so my guess is there is no power on off on the unit itself, which I do not see. Okay. Um, all right. So let's uh, take out the goodies. That. Um, now, Sparkmaker did contact me, and they just wanted to let me know ahead of time that I do not need to level the build plate. Uh, so we're going to take their word for it and see if that's uh, that's the case. Um, now, I have seen these things in the past, and it looked like this vat was 3D printed almost. Uh, it looked really, really low quality, um, but rightfully so because it was supposed to be a budget printer. Uh, this one, I can confirm, has a metallic um, vat on it. So if there was plastic vats, they have done away with them. So, all right, let's open up our other baggie here. All right. Uh, looks like gloves. Oh, you know what? That might be a mask, mask then. Yeah. Yep, so this is just a mask. Uh, the resin 3D printing uh, factories tend to come with these masks. Uh, really, they don't do much. Um, this one is, it looks nicer, but it, I guarantee it doesn't do anything different um, in terms of, you know, protecting you against gases. It's basically a, uh, a doctor's mask, and... It's made to keep airborne particles from you talking uh, out of the air. That's that's about it. Uh, it's not there to protect you from uh, VOCs, volatile gases. So we're just gonna toss that out. Um, now you guys might be asking, oh well, you got a, you got the AnyCubic running here. Well, right behind my phone is a uh, pretty hefty uh, carbon filtration system. And uh, that takes care of any problems that I have. Uh, these are really, really lower grade filters, I can tell already. Uh, these are like super, super cheap. They're, they're almost like falling apart at the end here. So not the greatest of filters, but we're still going to keep them and add them to the, you know, thousand other that I have. Uh, gloves, we'll keep those. Scraper, we'll put that off to the side for the time being. We'll open up our SD card. Uh, this is a four gigabyte, which I haven't seen in a long time. Usually printers nowadays come with eight gigs. So we'll probably end up uh, upgrading that at a later date, uh, especially since this is called a uh, root card, R-O-O-T, uh, I'm guessing. So that's probably not gonna last very long. It's uh, obviously a budget card, so. Let's go ahead and unplug our longer orange, which is just beside us. And we'll use the power from that to power this bad boy. Let's get that out of the way. In. Okay, so it did say uh, read the operations guide, so let's go ahead and get into that. Hopefully we don't uh, need to go too far into it. Uh, do not eat resin used for printing and printed models. Uh, I would hope not. Keep out of reach of children and pets. Yes. 
uh, shake resin before. Now, this does not come with a bottle of resin, unfortunately. Uh, I know some earlier units used to come with it, uh, but uh, at least this model does not. So uh, I don't know if that's a recent change or whatnot. Uh, I know back in the day when they first did a Kickstarter, um, they did include two full bottles of resin. So that was kind of nice that they uh, included that. But uh, again, this is a budget printer. So uh, yeah, so the size is... Uh, 125 millimeters it looks like so this just basically goes over everything so don't really need to read much onto here so check before printing keep the power connection cable now rotate smoothly and press it smoothly Z access movement is smooth okay Uh, we're not going to level because supposedly that already has. Now, I will say one thing on the earlier units that I've seen on some of the other review sites, uh, YouTube. Um, this does say WOW on it. Uh, they have obviously removed this. And it looks like it's not a 3D printed part, but this entire gantry looks like it might be molded plastic, which I'm not... I'm not too keen about, but if they, oh, this is all plastic, actually. I'm not too excited about that, but uh, we'll, we'll see about that. Um, all right, let's see. Insert K. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and get this started up here. We're going to go ahead and plug it in. And we're going to turn it on. Right. There we go, we got a green light. Okay, so pretty simple operation. Left is up. This is a pretty loud burner. One thing I wish they kind of did was made it move in like 10 millimeter increments instead of one, but I guess that's okay. Again, it is a budget printer. Now, I do see 3M here, but I think that's... Alright, so in order for you to remove the FET film, um, you actually have to remove these two Allen screws, and I bet you that... The vats that come with other printers are probably too large for this. I don't have an extra one, but, uh, I mean, you could probably fit one on there, but I, I would guess that it would touch the back end, so probably won't work. But at least this part is metal. Um, so it does look like that there is a uh, leveling um, cutoff. So there's like a groove set in the back end here that uh, basically tells you, hey, this is this is your max level fill, I would guess. Let's get in here for a second while I get all this uh, styrofoam off. There. It's always good to have a can of spray. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get a bottle of resin. Let's see what we got on tap here. We have some high, uh, or we can use up a little bit of longer. Let's see, we got a little bit of longer left. So let's go ahead and just pour the rest of this out. There's about 50, 50 millimeters left on this, in this bottle. For whatever we need to. Alright, so it does say that uh, to insert the SD card into a computer, which I do have my laptop on hand here. So let's go ahead and start this up.
Okay, so please do not pour an excess resin to prevent resin from overflowing, resulting in damage to the LCD screen. Yes, that is uh, muy importante. <clears throat> Okay, so let's go ahead and check out what's on here. Most likely, I would think a guide for one. So it looks like they used up a good portion of this SD card. So the SD card is four gigs. And there's only 261 megabytes left on this, so, um, so yeah, we're going to go to test file, um, okay, end of printing. When inserting the metal contact points, go into the, the bottom. Okay, so let's do something small. Let's check this out. Oh, that's something big. We just want something simple. We don't need anything spectacular. Let's see if there's a simple file on here. These are all pretty insane files. They all have supports on them. If you guys can't see, uh, my apologies, but uh, yeah, basically ring with supports. Uh, soldier. This might be the zombie hunter that's on the longer. Let's see what this looks like. It seems like it's a pretty big print. Okay, so your typical army soldier. That's cool. Triceratops. It's a triceratops with a fish body. What in the world? Who thought of that? <laughs> okay, so all of these look like they're printing with supports, which... I guess is kind of a good thing because that does let you know how the printer is going to react to it. Um, but that's a little discerning. The Da Vinci. So, you know, let's go with something kind of cool but simple. Uh, and that is like the, um, what do they call that? The Orlando, Florida. The Well, it's not really that. It's, it's a globe. Um, so, I mean... We'll, uh, we'll print that one out. The supports look pretty good. So let's go ahead and go back really quick. Um, instruction manual, print parameter, spark maker resin, software, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so let's do... Looks like there might be a file loaded on here already. So from gathering on this, obviously you can only have one. Oh, so it looks like they already loaded that one up. Good. I guess great minds think alike. Um, so if we're going to use this, my guess is you can only have one file on here at a time because there's no LCD interface. It's just the SD card and this knob. That's it. So... Um, going to do this face up. When inserting the metal contacts, point of the SD card is facing up. Okay. Alright, so we went ahead and did that. Open the bottle of resin. Uh, do not place... Okay. Uh, press the knob. The indicator light will turn red and flashing, and the printer will start printing.
I don't know if that's binding or if it's just the printer itself. That's pretty loud vibrations. <laughs> Uh, most likely because it's a 3D printed, well not 3D printed, it's a, it's a molded plastic uh, uh, 3D printer for the most part. It's not metal, like this has a metal Z-axis, this has a metal Z-axis, that one has a metal Z-axis. Uh, the G-Tech I have, the Anycubic Photon S, they all have metal uh, Z, uh, risers, I guess you could call it. Uh, so this does have a, uh, a linear rail on it, so it should be pretty good, but uh, we'll see. My guess is with this only being 50 uh, milliliters, we're probably going to end up having a failure on it, but let's see if I can pull some more resin out of here. Still pretty loud. Must say. Most likely this is not going to be level, judging by the way it looks. Uh, and the reason I say that is because, well, um, you can tell the print base is higher on the right side here than it is the left. So um, my guess is it's going to uh, either not print at all or just fail at some point. I mean, obviously not printing at all is going to be a failure, but, you know, we're, we're going to see what it, it kind of does. But for the most part, that's the Spark Maker. Pretty straightforward, simple printing. Um, so it does have a pretty beefy fan on the side here. Uh, probably a 20 or 30 millimeter fan. It's nothing spectacular. Um, there are some downfalls of this. Um, obviously, if you need to check your LCD screen, that means you'd have to remove the VAT and run a print in order to check it because there's no there's no real way to just you know hit a button on the screen like you normally do and go over to the UV curing setting or wherever it may be on your printer and uh, you know it'll show up and and be um, it'll show you how it works uh, whereas this has no LCD screen it's a one click and done so if you're looking for a really really simple um, resin printer and you don't want to go too crazy about it um, then it's probably a really good printer for you. Uh, I personally think that it's maybe a little bit more advanced than people might give it credit for. Uh, and the only reason for that is because it doesn't have an LCD screen. You have to do everything on your PC. And uh, if you don't know anything about slicing software or how to orientate models or what, whatever it may be in terms of slicing the model and getting it onto the actual SD card, that's a whole other thing that you have to learn. Now, granted, you do have to learn that with any of these printers, but um, with these printers that have LCD screens, you kind of get more, uh, more bang for your buck. So, uh, currently, this printer, uh, I believe it was $229 on Amazon, uh, and they had a, I think it was a $50 off coupon at that point in time when I, I purchased it, and uh, that's, that's a pretty good price range. If this printer is under $200, I don't see any reason why that shouldn't be 
the best bang for your buck. Uh, the only other printer that I saw in its price range would be the longer thir or I'm sorry, longer ten, um, and that does offer some extra things like an LCD screen, um, and you know a bigger base and everything. But for the most part, it's pretty much the same printer you're probably going to get the same quality prints so if you're someone who likes the touch screens and everything then by all means you know that might be a little bit better of a deal for you but uh if you're just wanting to get into it doing something simple and not have to you know mess around with the screens or anything like that then by all means this is probably a really really good buy because it is a very very small compact printer it's 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 literally half the size of this so i don't have a don't have my measuring stick here but i can i can almost guarantee you that's a good 10 millimeter difference easily um and uh in terms of like width like this is great like i can i can replace this one this printer with this and it won't take up much of my space. So that's definitely a, uh, a, a good thing to have is that it is a good space saver. So if you are stuck with, you know, needing space on something, by all means, go ahead and get the spark maker. It is, it is a really, really uh, compact unit. And uh, from what I've seen, it's, it's a pretty good printer uh, all around, maybe just slightly better than the longer in terms of print quality, but I guarantee it's it's going to be very minute if you're doing really, really detailed things, uh, because the price range basically tells you, hey, this is, this is a budget printer. This is what you're going to start with. You're going to get good prints, like, you're going to get a print something like this, but obviously if you did it on, you know, one, the one print on this and the same print on this, same resin, same settings, or, or what have you, um, I guarantee that this one will come up more detailed, less under or over extruded, um, or cured, however you want to say it, uh, than this model will be, because you are getting a budget printer, and that's pretty much what you need to know right off the bat like don't expect anything amazing so in terms of 3d printing when it comes to fdm and resin you're probably going to get a better result on this obviously because with uh fdm printing you're gonna need to change out some nozzles and tinker with the software a little bit on the slicer side to get the settings that will get it close to a print like this. But uh, that, that takes a lot of time and a lot of know-how and you really you really got to play around with it. Whereas this, this is pretty much a click and print and by however long it's going to take you, that's, that's what it's going to do. Um, it's going to come out with a print. And the, uh, I've noticed a lot with resin printers that the failure rate is uh, kind of higher, but in terms of, uh, you know, what it fails with, if it's a flat part, so like this, take for example, this was printed on a build plate. So everything that you print is going to be opposite to FDM. FDM is right up front. It's, it's going to be printing like this, okay? Whereas SLA, DLP, you're going to be printing off of the build plate, so it's going to be doing it, um, I guess, kind of mirrored uh, to it in a way. So um, you're definitely going to notice that's a big difference between them, but uh, the quality of that these printers produce is just, it's amazing, but... Uh, for for the price that it's at right now, it's an okay printer. Uh, I will say that. Uh, the packaging was really nice. Um, really, really compact design, which I really, really enjoy. I will probably keep this on my desk because of that. 
Um, whereas like right behind me here, I have most of my printers that are going to be set up on uh, a giant rack. And uh, basically it's going to be like go from print to, um, to the wash stations and then to the cure station. So uh, basically they're going to have their own process because they are bigger printers. Um, I can... I can probably keep the printers up here, but again, I mean, look at it, it takes up a lot of room. Like, that's that's a huge difference between these two printers. Uh, and I think as of right now, the Anycubic Photon, the original one, is about $270, last I checked. It's probably less now because of the ever-growing popularity of the Photon S. Um, which we will do reviews on this one and the Photon S uh, once I get a chance and I wanted to get all these unboxing done but uh, I don't want to I don't want to stray away from uh, what this video is supposed to be so basically this is what it is we've unboxed it uh, it comes with a lot of nice uh, packaging and a lot of nice uh, operating guide pretty straightforward SD card comes with a print ready to go um, and it's a, uh, a globe in a way, um, downfalls, I would say right out of the box. It's very loud. Um, but when it's printing, it's not moving too much, so it's not too loud. Uh, but the vibration I'm worried is going to transfer into the print. Uh, but since it's not FDM, that might not happen because it, it only moves up. And that's when you hear the vibration, and then when it moves down, you hear the vibration, and it's not when it's it's curing it. So that's a good possibility that it might not. We'll have to take a look at the print when it's done. Um, and again, that'll be in another video when we actually show off everything and, and make sure that, you know, it's working the way that it's supposed to. But all in all, is it a good printer for the buy? I would definitely say so. Uh, if you're looking to get into resin printing on a super, super budget, this is a pretty good start right here. So if you bought this printer plus a bottle of resin, you know, uh, depending on which one you get, they can range anywhere from $20 to $40. Let's say you go with a budget one, that's $20. There's absolutely nothing wrong with going with a budget resin. Uh, they all work pretty much the same. You just got to find those sweet spots. Um, so with a $20 bottle of resin and a $230 printer, you're at $250. That's right below the Elegoo Mars price. Um, but again, you're not getting any resin with the Elegoo Mars. So the only other printer in its class range for price would be the Longer 10. And I will tell you right now, I just did a review on the Longer 30. And this hood that comes with the Longer, you literally have to piece it together. That is probably the most worst thing that I can ever possibly put together because it's four squares with a fifth one in the center and trying to keep those all together it literally takes three pairs of hands in order to do that so uh, it does take a long while I ended up just melding mine together with a soldering iron because I wasn't going to deal with a rubber band on my hood so uh this one actually comes with a full put together hood. So pretty simple, straight up. I mean, what, that took me no more than 10 minutes out of the box and we're already printing. So uh, whether or not it's gonna print, we'll, we'll have to see in another video. But uh, as of right now for ease of use, price, and what you get with it, it literally cannot be beat. Uh, it's probably the best budget printer as of right now. There's not one on the market except for, like I said, the Longer 10, which comes in a close second. But again, that that put together for the hood is just, it takes it all away, unfortunately. If it's under $200, it's definitely, it'll kill this for sure. Uh, as much as I hate to say that because this is supposed to be a video about this printer, um, it's just got some better features on it that uh, make your printing uh, a lot simpler. But uh, if you want something that's small, compact, and does a good job, 
by all means, look at the Spark Maker. It's a, uh, a great little printer for its price. And uh, I've already talked with them a little bit about, you know, possibly changing some things. Uh, so we'll have to see if that's going to happen or not. Uh, but uh, if, if they can market this for under $200... By all means, uh, I don't. I don't think this uh, will be a printer that can be beat uh, for SLA printers. So, like I said, in in all, if you're looking for a good budget printer, by all means, get yourself a Spark Maker. It's definitely worth every penny. Until then, guys, happy printing.